Okay, I think we need to show you the 30-year Treasury. I know we talk a lot about the 10-year, but the 30-year Treasury yield, the minute we started the show at 3 p.m. Eastern, the long bond yield hit session highs. Uh, we're looking at it right now at 3.01% for the 30-year, 3.06% at this very moment. And uh, I just want to always check the 10-year yield. We're looking at it at about 2.7% for the 10-year. Everybody's watching interest rates. What's the Fed going to do? Well, guess what? Edward Lawrence just sat down in the last hour with Federal Reserve Vice Chair Richard Clarida to discuss this. Edward, you really pushed him here, and the markets came, came off even more of the floor they had been on. Let's talk about what he said and what, what really kind of uh, hit you there. Yeah, I really think that the markets liked, obviously, what they heard, uh, at least a little bit uh, in terms of this interview here. But I can tell you, the Federal Reserve Vice Chairman Richard Clarida did say he conceded that there's a little bit more uncertainty because of the federal government shutdown. And that's because the Commerce Department is shut down and they released data to the Fed on GDP, also retail sales. And that data may be delayed. Still, Clarida says that the economy is very strong. In fact, we have a lot of momentum, as he says, going into 2019. Now, for that reason, they had four rate hikes in 2018, including last December. Our priority is pursuing a monetary policy that will achieve our objective, which is full employment and price uh, stability. Uh, we think we can afford to be very patient uh, in our meetings this year as we assess the appropriate uh, policy. But we think the economy has good momentum going into the year. And be patient. That's been the mantra now from the Federal Reserve. Uh, the Federal Reserve vice chairman says that they listened to the market volatility in December and says that they're now flexible on the rates going forward. They're going to be meeting by meeting to see what they need to do. The Fed forecasted two more rate hikes uh, for 2019. Now we may see those in the summer or in late next year. In the meantime, the vice chairman says he does not regret, is not second guessing that rate hike in December. The decision was unanimous. I did support it. I think it was the right decision. And at this point, what, what we've been really doing is removing accommodation. We were at zero interest rates in the U.S. for a long time. Rates now at a, at a little bit under 2.5% are just above the rate of uh, inflation, which historically, if you look at a chart, is, is still a pretty low level of, of interest rates. So I think it was the appropriate decision to continue that, that normalization. So I asked him that uh, if they get to that sort of around 3% goal, the long-term goal at 2.8%, could that be enough to handle the next recession uh, using the uh, Federal Reserve interest rates? Well, I could tell you that he said that he does not see a recession in 2019, even for some time to come. He adds that uh, low rates are a fact of life now, uh, and they do have tools. It's something we have to deal with, and they also have tools within the Federal Reserve to be able to handle the next recession that comes along. Back to you, Liz. Edward, stick with us. I want to bring in Market Watch's uh, markets editor, Mark DeCambry. And, and Mark, you know, we just had this banner that said that Clarida says we have great uh, momentum in the economy so we can afford to be patient. Here's what I heard. I heard, dip my toe in the water. It's great. The water's great. Stay out. I mean, what did you think you heard from Edward's interview with Richard Clarida? Yeah, I, I heard a, a similar sort of cautious tone, um, but, you know, I think it was more or less a reaffirmation of what you heard from Jerome Powell earlier, um, twice at least last week, the idea that uh, growth is slowing um, globally, uh, but uh, the U.S. Econo economy remains strong. You also heard that from the uh, uh, city CEO, Michael Corbat, today uh, on their earnings call. He, he uh, reiterated some of those uh, similar sentiments about the, the health of the U.S. economy. Yeah, and, and Citibank uh, certainly has a very nice move in its stock. It's up about 4% right now because of those earnings that came out. But, um, Edward, did, did he get into any texture when it comes to the Fed's role beyond its original two mandates, which is full, full employment, rather, right. and keeping a, a lid on inflation? On inflation, yeah. No, he stuck to those two principles, saying that they believe the economy and what they're doing can manage that. Uh, inflation has been 1.9 percent last year. It's uh, you know around that 2 percent level where they say so. We're not really seeing inflation in this. You know, it is interesting. Uh, he did talk about the global slowdown. He said that again, the global slowdown is affecting other countries, but it's not really affecting the United States at this moment. He said it could affect the United States, but it's interesting. So I then went on and asked him about uh, the uh, interest rate. 
rates and, and now how they have, are flexible, meeting to meeting on those interest rates, would that mean that companies would start to open up their investment again? He said that might affect global companies, maybe possibly opening investment here in the United States, seeing that the rates would remain possibly lower uh, into next year, or into this year. Go ahead, Mark. I was just going to say, it seems like the big X factor is the, uh, the trade issues with China and the right. U.S. Right. Um, that's the big, um, I guess, ham, hamstring uh, the economy here, because at the same time, you have the U.S. Uh, in, in a healthy state, and, and Ed uh, pushed him a little bit to say whether or not we're headed into a recession. He said, I don't see it on the horizon. Um, but at the same time, you know, you get that undertone of if things continue to de deteriorate in the uh, in the global economy, that that might start to impact the U.S. Watch well, it on U.S. Shores. Let's just say December exports for China fell the most in about two and a half years. They put that out on Sunday, and you know, exports fell 4.4 percent. The expectation was that for them to rise 2.5 percent. So I, I'm with you there, Mark. I, I do think that though President Trump might be secretly cheering that weakness because it may he believes forced China to a deal. In the meantime, what do the markets think? Well, Trump seems to be juggling a lot of balls right now between the partial, gov partial government shutdown, which is already in a record, and trade negotiations. He's, you know, the expectation is that he was going to be in Davos uh, with the, the opportunity to maybe talk to um, uh, the Chinese president. But uh, it, it seems uncertain when we're going to hit some kind of re resolution on trade. But that's the biggest headwind that the market, at least, is communicating to us. Uh, Mark and Edward, thank you so much. Edward, fantastic exclusive interview with the vice chair of the Federal Reserve.